A Guide to Workers' Compensation Hearings in Arizona, presented by the Industrial Commission of Arizona. The Industrial Commission of Arizona, also known as the ICA or the Commission, is a state agency created in 1925. The main office building is in Phoenix at 800 West Washington Street. The phone number is area code 602-542-4661. In Tucson, the commission is at 2675 East Broadway. The phone number is area code 520-628-5188. The Commission also has a website at www.ica.state.az.us. The Commission's hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, except legal holidays. There are information desks at both the Phoenix and Tucson Commission offices. The Industrial Commission is not your employer's insurance company. It is not the same as SCF Arizona or any other insurance company. Your claim is one of 150,000 workers' compensation claims that will be filed this year in Arizona. One of the Commission's functions is to oversee the administration of claims for workers who are injured on the job. Another is to conduct hearings when claims are in dispute. Approximately 8,000 claims are referred to hearing per year. This is designed to give you basic information about what happens during the workers' compensation hearing process. It is not intended to give legal advice. If you want legal advice, you must consult with an attorney. Your employer and its insurance company will have an attorney. You may also hire a lawyer if you wish, but the Commission will not hire one for you. Many attorneys will represent you without you having to pay unless the attorney wins benefits for you. If you need legal advice, consult a licensed attorney who practices workers' compensation law. To find an attorney, Call the State Bar of Arizona for a list of workers' compensation attorneys at area code 602-252-4804 or visit the State Bar's website at www.azbar.org or use your local yellow pages and look under Attorneys. Sometimes the Industrial Commission makes decisions in your claim by issuing awards but most of the decisions on your claim are made by your employer's workers' compensation insurance company. It notifies you of decisions by mailing you a notice of claim status. This notice tells you the status of your claim or benefits. For example, it may tell you that your claim is denied, or that your compensation benefits are being changed, or that your benefits have been terminated. If you disagree with either a notice of claim status or an award issued by the Commission, you can request a hearing by mailing or hand-delivering your request to the Industrial Commission before the listed deadlines. Deadlines for requesting hearings can range from 10 to 90 days. Read the notice carefully. It will tell you how many days you have to file a hearing request. In addition, even though no notice or award has been issued, if you're not getting medical care or compensation benefits that you think you should be getting, you can file a hearing request. You may request a hearing by letter, or you can use the Commission's Request for Hearing form, which can be obtained online, by mail, or at the Commission. No fee is required. Fill out the form completely. List the reasons you want a hearing. Be sure to list your correct address and telephone number. If you are not fluent in English, request an interpreter, listing the language you speak. Your request for hearing must be received at the Commission on or before the deadline date. In the hearing process, you are the applicant. Your employer and its insurance company are the defendants. You are all parties to the claim. Your request for hearing will be assigned to an administrative law judge, also known as the ALJ. The judge is employed by the Commission and State of Arizona. He or she does not work for you or the other parties and is neutral. The judge will determine the facts and decide the outcome of your case after considering the evidence. Official documents list the ICA number, the number the Commission has assigned to your claim, the insurance company's claim identification number, and your date of injury. 
any correspondence you send to the Commission or the judge must list these claim numbers, and you must send copies of everything you send to the Commission to the defendant's attorney. Hearings are scheduled two to four months after you file your request for hearing. Once you have filed a request for hearing, watch your mail carefully. If you move or change your mailing address, you must send a new address in writing to the insurance company, the commission, and the judge. Expect to receive letters from the defendant's attorneys and notices from the commission. Read and keep everything that comes in your mail. Also, keep copies of anything you send to the defendant's attorneys, the judge, or the commission. The commission assigns your case to a judge who will schedule your hearing. You will get a notice of the date and time of the hearing in the mail. Hearings are held at the commission or designated locations around the state. Be sure to note the date, time, and location of the hearing. Mark the time and address on your calendar. You can ask the judge to change the date of your hearing, but it has to be for a good reason. It is up to the judge whether the date will be changed. If you object to the judge assigned to your case, you can request a change of judge in writing within 30 days of the mailing date shown on your notice of hearing. You can do this only one time. Even though you do not have an attorney, you still have to know workers' compensation rules and law. Free booklets of the laws and rules of procedure that apply to workers' compensation hearings are available at the Commission. The same information is also available at www.ica.state.com. .az.us. Pick up a copy or read them online. Become familiar with them. The Commission has a helpful person called an Ombudsman, available to answer general questions about the workers' compensation claim process. The Ombudsman cannot give legal advice. The Ombudsman is in Phoenix. Contact the Ombudsman at area code 602-542-4538 in Phoenix or one 800 544-6488 from outside Phoenix. Documents, especially medical records, can be very important and sometimes essential to your claim. Remember, the Industrial Commission is not your insurance company. That means that neither the Commission nor the judge assigned to your claim will have the same file or documents that your employer or its insurance company has. You can request documents you might need to prove your case from the insurance company, which will have the most complete file of your medical and legal papers. You can also come to the Commission and review the documents it has in your claims file. The Commission file should have the important legal documents, but will not have as many medical records as the insurance company's file. After you request a hearing, the ALJ or Hearing Division creates yet another file. This file has fewer documents than the Claims Division, but contains all the papers that the parties file with the judge. You have the right to see and or request copies of all three files at your expense. You can also request your medical records from your doctor's offices. In the weeks before your hearing, you and the defendant's attorney can prepare by exchanging information about each other's cases. This is called discovery. You may receive written questions called interrogatories in the mail from defendants. You must respond in writing to these questions by the deadline given. You also have the right to ask questions by sending them in writing to the defendant's counsel. Ask the defendant's attorney to send you documents you want from the employer or insurance company. You may receive a notice at the defendant's request directing you to be examined by a doctor. Note the date, time, and location. If there is a problem with the date set for your medical examination, call the defendant's attorney to ask for another date or time and write the judge. The judge must receive your letter within three days of the date when you receive your notice of examination. Defendants pay for your medical examination, but you must keep the appointment. Failure to attend can result in penalty fees, sanctions, or forfeiture of your claim. When you go to an examination, you have the right to tape record it and or bring a doctor with you. You should tell the defendant's attorney in advance if you plan to do this. You are entitled to get a copy of the doctor's report. 
you may receive a notice of deposition. Note the date, time, and location. You must attend. If there is a problem with the date, immediately call and ask the defendant's attorney for another date or time. If that does not work, promptly write a letter to the judge and explain your problem. Unless the judge excuses your attendance in advance, you must attend. A deposition is a question and answer session with the defendant's attorney, usually at the attorney's office, but sometimes by telephone. At the deposition, you answer questions under oath. A court reporter will record your answers. If you need an interpreter, let the attorney know in advance and one will be provided. This is your opportunity to tell the defendants what you want in your claim. Sometimes it is possible to settle cases before the hearing. You might want to discuss this possibility with the defendant's lawyer at your deposition. Sometimes the judge will want to talk with you and the defendant's attorney before the hearing. If so, you will receive a notice for a pre-hearing conference in the mail, or the judge's secretary may call you to set up a time for the conference. Put the date, time, and location on your calendar. Usually, the conferences are conducted by telephone, but not always. Be sure to follow the instructions on the notice and, if asked to do so, call the judge's secretary and confirm the telephone number. Request an interpreter if needed. You may only talk to the judge if the defendant's attorney is present. The judge will usually identify the issue that will be considered at the hearing and briefly discuss the rules and the law that you will have to follow. The judge may ask you about witnesses or evidence you plan to use at the hearing. You have the burden of proof. That means you must present evidence to support your position. You can prove your case through your testimony, the testimony of your witnesses, and by submitting written materials that support your case, such as medical reports and records. What evidence you need depends on the issue to be determined. For example, if the issue is whether you got hurt at work, you might want to request subpoenas for anyone who witnessed the incident. A subpoena is a legal notice from the judge ordering the witness to appear at that hearing. If the issue requires you to prove the medical cause of your injury, your need for more medical care, or your inability to work, you must get your medical records from your doctor and submit them in evidence and or ask the judge to issue a subpoena to your doctor. It is your responsibility to get these records from your doctor's or the insurance company's files and to submit them into evidence. You do this by mailing the records to the judge with a cover letter or filing them in person at the commission. You must send copies of whatever you file to the defendant's attorney. To get witnesses to testify, you may bring them to the hearing or ask the judge to issue a subpoena to your witnesses. Be sure to give the judge the witnesses' full names, addresses, and telephone numbers. Be sure to request a subpoena for your doctor. The commission will pay your doctor to testify. Here are deadlines you must follow. Medical documents must be received at the commission at least 25 days before the hearing. Requests for subpoenas for medical experts must be received at least 20 days before hearing. Other documents must be received at least 15 days before hearing. Requests for subpoenas of other witnesses must be received at least 10 days before hearing. On the day of your hearing, Arrive early at the commission. Check the TV monitor in the lobby or with the receptionist for your hearing room assignment. Check with the building's receptionist to be directed to the hearing room. Locate your hearing room. Wait in the hallway if the hearing room is in use. If not in use, enter the hearing room and be seated. Expect to see other people in the hearing room including the defendant's attorney, the judge, and the court reporter. Until the judge calls the hearing to order, casual chatting may occur between the participants and even the judge. Once the judge starts the hearing, there will be more formality. The hearing is your opportunity to present evidence in support of your claim. Although hearings are not as formal as other judicial trials, they are just as serious. All testimony is taken under oath or by affirmation to tell the truth. The defense attorney's job is to put information in the record favorable to his or her clients. Expect the attorney to question you and other witnesses. The attorney may raise legal defenses or issues. 
the attorney may also make objections or arguments during the hearing process. You will be allowed to respond to any arguments or objections made. You may also make your own objections. If you do not understand something at the hearing, ask the judge for an explanation. It is the judge's job to conduct an orderly and fair hearing, listen to the evidence, rule on objections, and ultimately decide your case by issuing a written award. The hearing will be recorded by a court reporter or a recording device. Most hearings are transcribed. The written transcripts of your hearing will be kept in a file where any party can refer to them. You will probably testify first. The judge will ask you questions about your claim and the evidence you have to support it. This is your chance to present your case to the judge. Listen carefully to the questions. Remember to speak loudly, clearly, and slowly enough to be understood. Answer questions in complete sentences. Answer yes or no out loud. Avoid nodding or shaking your head or saying uh-uh or uh-huh. Answer in descriptive words. Avoid gestures. If you're asked about your injury, name and describe the body part that was hurt rather than pointing to it. Remember, the judge will read and rely on the written transcript. Descriptive words get into the transcript. Gestures do not. Prepare ahead of time. Bring documents you may need. Refer to a document by its date and author if you want to bring it to the judge's attention. After the judge questions you, you may make a statement. Briefly and clearly state what you want from the judge. When the judge finishes questioning you, expect the defendant's attorney to ask questions. This is called cross-examination. Cross-examination allows the opposing attorney to draw out testimony from a witness that may help the attorney's clients. Your witnesses will testify next, followed by the defendant's witnesses. The party requesting the witness will question the witness first. The other party will then have the right to cross-examine or question the witness. If you have asked for a witness or plan to cross-examine the defendant's witnesses, prepare your questions ahead of time. If the judge thinks additional witnesses are needed, the judge will schedule further hearings, usually within 90 days. Further hearings sometimes cannot be scheduled for two or three months after the initial hearing. This means the entire hearing process may take several months to complete. You must attend the initial hearing and all further hearings. If you live outside Tucson or Phoenix, you may make arrangements to attend further hearings by telephone. No more evidence may be submitted after the last hearing. The judge cannot decide your case until all witnesses have testified. You can expect the judge to issue a decision upon hearing within 30 to 60 days after your last hearing. Watch for the decision in the mail. Again, if you move, be sure to notify the judge, the commission, the insurance company, and defense counsel of your new address. When the decision comes, read it carefully. Any party disagreeing with the decision may request the judge to review it within the first 30 days. The decision is final after 30 days if no review is requested. Once the decision is final, if you agree with it and were awarded more medical care, go get the care. If you are awarded more compensation, call the insurance representative for your check. If you disagree with the decision, you have 30 days from the award's mailing date to request a review and different decision. You must request review by writing the judge. State why you think the judge was wrong. Be sure to send a copy of what you write to the defendant's attorney. Your request for review must be received at the commission no later than 30 days from the date the award was mailed. The judge will issue a notice of review. The defendant's attorney may file a written response to your request. You may be happy with the decision, but get a notice of review in the mail because the defendants have disagreed with the decision. You are not required to respond, but if you want to respond, read the defendant's argument and file your response with the judge within 15 days from the date the request for review was filed. The judge will review the record and issue a new award called a decision upon review. Read the decision upon review carefully. The judge may make additional findings that affect you. If you still disagree with the decision upon review, follow the instructions found in the document telling you how to appeal it. 
a petition for special action must be received at the Arizona Court of Appeals, 1501 West Washington, Phoenix, Arizona, 85007, no later than 30 days from the date the decision upon review was mailed. Contact the Clerk of the Court of Appeals at area code 602-542-4821 for more information. We hope this has given you helpful information about the hearing process at the Industrial Commission and the importance of your participation in it. Further information is available on the Internet at www.ica.state.az.us and from the Industrial Commission's Ombudsman's Office. This has been intended to provide general information and should not be considered legal advice. If legal advice is required, seek the services of a lawyer. For the current status of the rules and law, you should refer to the Commission's procedural rules and the Arizona Revised Statutes. Thanks to the following people for their help with this project.